That's the intro. <laughs> Welcome to the Fuji GFX 100 Mark II. <laughs> A few weeks ago, my editor Lucas and I were invited to Sweden, to Stockholm, by Fujifilm to go and explore and check out the new GFX 100 Mark II and a few of their new lenses. So let's talk about the camera body. The camera itself looks premium and when it's in the hands, it feels premium. But it is a beefier and bigger camera and it also is quite heavy, especially when you start putting some of the bigger lenses on it. Now it is a medium format camera, so that is to be expected. And it is a similar experience to holding the Hassel Blad X2D. One of the things that I thought was really cool about this camera is that you can actually take off the viewfinder, which is similar to the previous GFX models like the 50S and the 100S. So you're gonna end up having a camera that looks kind of similar to like a Sony FX3, but you just don't have any like mounting points on it. So let's dive into my experience with this camera on the photo side. With the release of this camera, they have announced a new film simulation called Real Ace, which takes all of the history from some of the previous Fuji film, like film stocks. So you have another one that's gonna generate some really beautiful colors. This camera has the ability to shoot eight frames per second, which is pretty crazy considering each one of these 102 megapixel photos is anywhere between like 500 megabytes to 600 megabytes. That's a lot of data being written to a card in such a short period of time, which makes this camera a lot more appealing to someone like me who shoots automotive, moving objects, and sports. At the event, Fuji raved about their brand new autofocus system and how it's been improved since the previous models. Now, through my experience on the photo side of things, everything that I wanted to shoot a photo up was in focus. They have new AI enhanced like auto tracking for like humans and animals and, and different objects like that. And all that stuff worked seamlessly. It's more on the video side of things where the autofocus becomes a little bit more complicated. And on that note, let's talk about the video side of things. What I was alluding to at the beginning of this video was the idea that nobody's really thought about Fujifilm as a video camera company. This is the camera that I think everyone's gonna start going, hmm. Okay, Fuji's at the table for video. So let's talk about some of like the pro features that they've introduced with this camera. So now we have ProRes internal, we got 14 stops of dynamic range. We have cloud support to send proxies through frame IO. We have 4K 60 frames per second, and we also have 8K 30 frames per second, all in 422 color, and you can shoot ProRes. We have a new F-Log profile that we can shoot with. We have in-body stabilization with eight stops. We have anamorphic support. We got waveforms, we got vector scopes, and you can record straight to an SSD. There's probably gonna be an audience now that's gonna look at this camera who are videographers and they're gonna wanna buy this camera purely for the video side of things and then be like, oh, this is also awesome that it shoots amazing photos too. I basically alluded previously that the autofocus system on the video side is just like not quite there yet. And what I'm talking about is that yes, we've seen leaps and bounds in better autofocus performance from the previous GFX models on the video side of things. But when we're really doing like a comparison to something like a Lumix S5 Mark II or like a Sony FX3, the autofocus systems there are just like really dialed in. And if I had to compare those systems to this system, I would say that Fuji is about like 80% of the way. In my personal opinion, I really feel like this camera is positioned for the pro level shooter, the person who's gonna be behind the camera most of the time. So if you're like a vlogger or a YouTube personality, I just don't really see you using this camera for like vlogging purposes. Like obviously you can always do those things, but it doesn't have a flip around screen. So you're not gonna be taking selfies with this camera. You're not gonna be taking any like vlogging video with this camera. It's pro level features with pro level resolution. And before I jump into my final thoughts, I just kind of mentioned one of the things that I really enjoyed on this camera. It was the ability to tether the camera to to an iPad with Capture One so that you could see your photos in real time. So I really like that pro level workflow. Basically for the same price as the GFX 100S, you're now getting pro level video features as well. So if you've ever been on the fence about jumping into like the medium format world, or you're like, ah, that's a lot of money to spend on just a photo camera. Now you're just getting a camera where it's jam packed with value, where the video features are on par with a lot of the other camera systems that exist out there. So you could buy this camera to fulfill both both your photo and your video needs. Big shout out to Fujifilm. Thank you so much for having me at X Summit. I got the chance to meet some amazing creators there. I actually got to connect with Casey from GX Ace. His channel is amazing. If you wanna go and check out his review, I will also link it in the description below and at the end of this video. And shout out to 
Mr. Stallman, it was great to connect with you. I will link his video and review once it's live as well. All right, peace, bye, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that other stuff.